Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper and TireRack.com. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Thank you, Alec Webb. Welcome, everyone, to MotorWeek podcast number 308. I am John Davis, and joining me today is two-wheeling reporter Brian Robinson. Happy to be here, John. Happy oh. to be back in the office. Ah, uh, you're, you're telling the truth there. Over the edge reporter Greg Carlos. Likewise. I'm also happy to be back. We're all traveling lately, aren't we? I thought maybe I'd run into the airport. You were in L.A., right? Uh, I was no, I was in San Francisco. Uh, ah, okay. yeah, a little, a little California. North. California. All you All you globalites. And writer Alex Kellum. I'm here. Have not been traveling but it will be soon <laughs> yeah we it has been a busy busy fall for us at motor week and we're going to talk about a lot of the things that we've recently seen but we're really going to basically zero in on the just completed 2023 Detroit Auto Show. It certainly wasn't the North American International Auto Show that we've known from the past. Yeah, I was going to say, they still call it that? They or? actually okay. do. I, I saw it, and I actually had to go look it up because I thought they had dropped that, but nope, that's what they still call it. Uh, and, you know, it's, what can I say? It just sort of is a shadow of its former self. We've got four vehicles that are noteworthy we're going to talk about. Only one of them, as was pointed out by somebody is actually new. Uh, we're going to talk about the um, Cadillac CT5, uh, the new GMC Acadia, which is the new one, an updated Jeep Gladiator, and later in the show we'll talk about the updated 2024 Ford F-150. So let, let's start at the top, and, and maybe even before we get into the individual models, was this show a non-event, or was it really you know, trying to claw back into its former uh, glory? Yeah, I... I I mean, I don't want to be super negative, but it was kind of a non-event. <laughs> yes, you do, Greg. Yeah, well, I do, but I, <laughs> but we're trying I realize to be, that I shouldn't, we're is trying. what I should say. Uh, no, I mean, like, I don't— Discretion I don't, is the better part of valor. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm— I mean, with all due respect to these uh, car makers and, and, and vehicles, like there just wasn't a whole lot there. I mean, you think of a of a uh, Detroit Auto Show just three years ago for pre-COVID. Yeah. I mean, this the the rundown we have in front of us right now would have been filled. Oh, with, we used with, to with do cars. you know there would be twenty to twenty. We do a whole episode. We do a sometimes. whole show on just what was seen there, and it and and of course. I don't think any of the European brands were there. I don't think hardly any of the uh, the Asian brands were any there. And I might say, surprisingly, the Chinese brands were not there. Um, I it's become more of a an event for the family, and I think that's a a good thing for them. Uh, I'm just sorry to see uh, you know what was so such a big part of our coverage history um, go like this but it's true of auto shows all over the world yeah the i mean the car makers have done it to themselves yeah. like even pre covid yeah. there were so many things you would know almost everything before the auto show right. so like what's the point of going they put the video out there so they were getting less relevant even before but then covid yeah. really yeah. kind of took them out but it's also worth noting you know no new evs all we hear about is how yeah. you know you were going to have to buy an ev uh, no new EVs, and uh, you know this was taking place in Detroit at the time of uh, UAW Auto Strike when they're uh, picketing outside of plants. So oh, just just a joyous way to start the podcast. <laughs> yeah, let's get it going. Yeah, let's yes. get going. Okay, the uh, Cadillac CT5 2025. Hey, there still is going to be uh, a sports sedan from Cadillac uh, in 2025, which is really. Interesting. That is exciting. And it, I thought they did a nice job with it. Uh, the the photos that I saw look very good. A revised front fascia, uh, new 33 inch display with Google built in, uh, blind spot steering assist, uh, interactive automatic emergency braking. All those things are standard. 5G Wi-Fi. Okay, I want to stop right there. Oh. The one thing that jumps out at you is. I think this is going to be the first of the new GM products that won't be compatible with Apple CarPlay or Android mm -hmm. Auto. Huh. And, uh, you know, they're moving away from that. And I just think, why? It wouldn't be Android Auto? I mean, I, 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 I don't know about I, Android I, Auto. I know point, it's not going to have Apple CarPlay. At huh. this point, I've forgotten. It feels like they flip flop a lot because we had heard that they were doing away with it. Yeah. And then I thought yeah. they were going to reintroduce it. But I'm not sure. It's up in the air. All I know is that this is going to be a Google 
platform. A Google platform. Yeah. Yeah. And Google Which is doesn't, good. doesn't tend to play well with others. So. Yeah. Yeah. I well, I mean, it's. Uh, I went back and looked at some of our old CT5 footage and. Uh, it was due for an update. Yeah, uh, I think you so. You look at the front, the new headlight for, design, I think yeah, is Yeah, it's obvious. only been out since 2020, but it does, yeah. It, it, it does was looking, it looked, yeah, looked yeah. kind of stale, yeah, honestly, yeah, when sure. it came out. But, I was uh, surprised. I, I looked that up, like, how long has this gen been me out? Me too. But mm-hmm. It's only been three years, well, yeah. four years and now. We've already so. had the black wing, yeah. which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so a little bit of updated styling. Uh, the first thing I noticed was, like, that headlight, how it kind of, it's almost like it has a teardrop coming down. Yeah down the front face. I was going to say to the bumper, but there really aren't bumpers. I anymore. think that's their new styling trend. Yeah, I think they like XT4, yeah. I yeah. think, has it. So their SUVs have it. And then they obviously they had to upgrade the interior with that 33-inch uh, display, which I don't like. I don't know if 33 inches, when you hear that, sounds like as big as it is. But when you look at it oh, in the car, it's, it's that whole Escalade thing yeah. where it spans almost the entire yeah. dash. Right, and I think it, whereas this is one display, 33 mm-hmm. inches wide, like a lot of them will have like the 30 plus inch screen space, but it would be like individual foot, screens. Yeah, 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 one, yeah, one, yeah, one, yeah, one, complete, one configurable that's a good screen. Point. Yeah. Any comment on it, Alex? Oh uh, no, not much. I th- I thought it was funny. Like when they first put the pictures out, I was talking to some people, and they were like, "Did they really change it? Does it, you know, is it really <laughs> it's different?" It's subtle. It's, it's subtle. subtle. But like yeah, the on headlights the outside, and the side pockets well, it's like give it away. Because and, like that's what it should have looked like maybe three years yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> well, and, and the shortcoming, in my opinion, has mm-hmm. been their interiors. I mean, mm-hmm. I think actually yeah. this interior looks like the premium car that it's supposed to be. I mean, we love driving the CT5. It's oh, just yeah. that when you got in it, you didn't quite feel like you were in something that was really competitive with a BMW or Mercedes or anything else. Super premium. So, uh, the second, and this is the only uh, really all new vehicle there, the 2024 GMC Acadia. And uh, before we uh, started recording, Greg sort of summed it up about the history of the Acadia and where this new one fits in. Yeah, it was. It's just funny how um, you know. The, the the arc and the evolution of a, of a car go, or in this case, an SUV is like, it came out as like a modern three row SUV back in the day, early 2000s. Yeah, something like that. And then um, I think it was at Detroit in like 2016 mm-hmm. or 17 when the new Acadia came out and we're like, we're going to go smaller. It was like they yeah. shrunk it by like seven inches they in did, overall they, length, 600 pounds or 700 pounds of weight loss. They made it smaller and left the larger to the Buick uh, Enclave. Yes. And then I just thought it was funny when I read what was new about it this year. It was like, well, it's up 10 inches <laughs> yeah. in wheelbase. So, so, then now so they've it's made actually it even bigger, bigger than it was a generation we're gonna ago. We're going to pretend that last generation never <laughs> Yeah. And it, I mean, it's it's now it's falling in line with the rest of the GMC lineup. It's a little more rugged. They will have, a, I think, an AT4 uh, uh, package, which kind of makes it seem like more of a truck now, as opposed to the previous generation, which really embraced like that uh, kind of just street going. The suburban like Suburban, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not suburban as in Chevy suburban. Right. Yeah. But no, like just a, the, the idea. Big change in powertrain, though. This is the future, mm-hmm. folks. Uh, four cylinder only. Yep. But a 328 horsepower, 2.5 liter turbo four with an eight speed automatic. But you know we've seen it before. The 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 Grand Highlander. Uh, a lot of vehicle isn't the Grand Highlander just a four cylinder. Yeah, but turbo? there's there. Yeah, and it's three different hybrids. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it it's the future though. Four cylinders for these big vehicles. For sure, but also there's plenty of time for them to put something else in there. Should something else come on along down the Do line. Yeah. Did this didn't get a, yeah. a hybrid powertrain. Oh, I think it's it's tailor made for it. And we can talk more we're gonna talk a lot more about uh, hybrids for some of these things uh, going later in the show. Uh, let's see in the notes. 80% more cargo space than outgoing model. 80%. That's that's a well, big number. Yeah, from the previous model. Yeah. Right. Which was if smaller. compared it to the one before that, it would be probably comparable. I mean, a little bit more, but mm-hmm. um, I do want to note, because this kind of alludes to our viewer question later in the show, uh, Denali trim has 22-inch wheels, which I think is the biggest bling, put bling. on a uh, So what do you GMC. got? Sidewalls that are an inch and a half high? I mean, Painted on there? Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, baloney skins. <laughs> painted on there. Uh, you mentioned the AT4, uh, 18-inch wheels. So they went back to, obviously, for that's all-terrain gonna be tires. The, that's going to be the one people, I think, are 
are going to look for. I think that'll be very popular. A little higher yeah. tow hooks. That's what's going to get yeah. people into the dealership. It's all about the off-road yeah. packages yeah. on every single yeah. vehicle yeah, these I mean, days. And it seems like their design language is a little more chiseled out now, a little mm -hmm. bit more rugged. So the AT4 kind of falls in line. Plus, I mean, red tow hooks. I mean, come on. Looks great. It will have I'd super repaint mine. <laughs> You what? You I'd repaint, repaint my tow hooks just so to be different. It will have the latest version of Super Cruise, which I think mm -hmm. we all the autonomous, semi-autonomous system that uh, that generally it gets great reviews, including from us, uh, and a new all-wheel drive system using more torque control. So, you know, they GMC has taken a long time, but they have accomplished what they set out to do, which was to make them a premium brand uh, i mean they're not not a cadillac but they're basically a lot more than what you expected from essentially what was a rebad chevrolet you know 20 years ago and i had my doubts that they were going to actually achieve it but i think they've done it i think they've done it the new acadia looks really good uh 2024 jeep gladiator this is an update and uh so what do you think of yes. uh, bear I, I i the grill is different Mm -hmm. I mean, right. they, yep. still seven yep. slots, but it's, it's good. If it you saw our recent review of the Wrangler update, yeah. this is basically everything now applied to the Gladiator. Second row curtain airbags, yeah, yeah. Uh, windshield, standard antenna, windshield antenna. Uh, you connect five, and then the uh, with the whole seven motif, seven new wheel designs. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Power and seats was that? I, I never even occurred to me that that wasn't available before. Yeah. I would I would say the the big thing there is while you can still get a manual with it or an automatic transmission, the diesel option is gone. Yeah, and it is just the three point six liter Pentastar V six. That that engine is going to probably be the last uh, and it's the most modern V6 in Detroit it's probably going to be the last V6 that Detroit will make I mean it's it's a great motor and we'll it's see. soldier gone yeah well that's true who knows uh, you know who knows what's going to happen in the future we will come back to the Detroit Auto Show and talk about the um, 2024 Ford F-150 which was also just a redo but a pretty thorough redo with some interesting new features a little bit later in the show uh, we're going to move on but first we just want to note our thank Thanks very much to our advertisers for Motor Week, Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper, and also TireRack.com, uh, who's been uh, our uh, adver main advertiser for many, many years. Both of those uh, firms, uh, thank you very much for your support for not only Motor Week, the television series, but Motor Week's podcast as well. We do have an email, and this goes back to what you were just mentioning, uh, Greg, from George Green. Is there any practical, and that's the word, reason why manufacturers seems to be making larger and larger diameter wheels? We mentioned the Acadia with 22 inches. Are practical. There, are there reasons? Yeah. yeah. Are there practical reasons? Yeah, that's the big difference. That's the. He, I mean, he, obviously George knows what he's talking about. I think that's we, why he put practical this, in there. We've talked about this yeah. uh, in years past, uh, and we. I think we've mentioned like performance benefits. Technically, if you go larger, mm -hmm. wider wheels, more grip, more contact with the you have less the sidewall flex. So they generally can but, handle a little bit better. Yeah, but uh, most of it's aesthetics. Yeah. I did a whole segment last year on it, just how like dub culture and like 20 inch wheels and then going up to 20, 21, 22, like we saw on a GMC Acadia now has 22 inch wheels. I mean, I mean it's just, it's it's a style thing for the most part. And and they must have really softened up the suspension because basically when you lose the sidewalls, you basically are inducing harshness. Yeah, it definitely made the suspension engineer's job uh, harder. But, uh, yeah, it depends on what your definition of practical is. But certainly there is a performance benefit. Everyone can understand making them wider increases your contact patch. But making them taller also increases your contact patch. So And it, and with less sidewall flex, you've got yeah. you know, less squeezy in, in, in tight corners. Alex? I think we uh, also talked about this recently about EVs, with mm -hmm. how different wheels can also change. Uh, your range can change efficiency so 
uh, if we want to talk EV wise, there's uh, there may be reasons to go bigger or smaller. But I mean, really, uh, it, the looks you want to look cool. You go with the big. Yeah, ones. I mean, <laughs> whenever just think back to when we used to see auto show concepts, they always had these ridiculous yeah. big wheels in them because basically, when you leave all the space you need to leave in, or used to have to leave in in a wheel well for things like chains and stuff like that, they look funny. Mm-hmm. You know, they look like some like uh, roller skates. I remember going on a Bentley Continental event and. They had uh, like 19 inch wheels at the time. I don't even remember, but Whoa, I was <laughs> wow. I was talking to like the engineer, one of the engineers about that, and I was like, I've never seen a Continental with the stock wheels on it. Everyone puts new wheels on it, <laughs> and he's like, you wouldn't imagine like how hard, how many man hours go in to tuning that ride and everything, and then Im- immediately people go swap wheels and destroy everything they worked for. So, and that's the other thing that they want to they want a piece of that aftermarket wheel yeah. business. Yeah, yeah. Sure. you know, go on to uh, eBay or, or Marketplace, and all you've mm-hmm. got are all these wheels taken straight off something that's brand new, mm-hmm. uh, replaced with custom. And you know, they replaced them with something that's 20, 22 inches or whatever. So think about the engineers before you swap your wheels. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> that kind of brings a little tear to my eye. <laughs> so, George, uh, I think we basically summed that up. There's probably not a lot of practical reasons, but uh, but there you have it. So let's go back to the Detroit show and and talk a little bit about this 2024 Ford F-150. It's a freshening, but Ford over the years, when they have used opportunities, when they've refreshed, uh, especially their trucks, to really add some new features. And it looks like they've done that again. Um, They did replace their standard powertrain, the 3.3 liter V6, which has been around, seems like forever. It's been replaced by a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. Um, They're doubling the production of the PowerBoost models for model year 24, uh, a new entry-level off-road trim STX, a larger infotainment screen. Uh, and um, who wants to tackle this one? This is probably the biggest news for most consumers, the Pro Assist tailgate. Uh, they finally have a trick tailgate, but it is different. Unfortunately, uh, Jessica, who was the only one at the show for <laughs> us, is not here at the moment. And she played with it, but she did make a video. Uh, you can check it out on, uh, I think, YouTube, Instagram. You know, mm-hmm. Just look on the Internet, Motor Week, yeah. Pro Assist tailgate. Where... It, but the cool thing to me was, while it swings open, and that's certainly not yeah, new, like three but not the whole right? yeah, part of it, right? just the center. Like one tub. Yeah. It's almost like you can visualize those walk-in tubs they advertise on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks like that. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and the idea is that is when you're hooked up to a trailer, it creates easier access to the bed. Uh, which I've, even in their photos, like one of the first photo I looked at, the trailer was disconnected and the guy <laughs> was using it. So like, I I don't think it's like a revolutionary thing. I think they're just kind of, they're on a Ford's playing catch up with this because yeah. we saw it, uh, what's uh, GM's version? What GM the, has that multi-step multi, tailgate. Yeah, they had started with There's G- multi-step, but it doesn't split though, No, right? no, no. They no have, the Ram yeah. splits. No, it doesn't split. Yeah, yeah the Ram splits. Rams but what I'm, what and I'm Honda's to, had it for a long time. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. what I'm getting to is that Ford didn't really have anything like this. They, no, but they did have the step that folds out, which step. to me is like the most practical tailgate setup of them all. I mean, yeah, we agree. should point out that this, even though they put a door in the middle of their tailgate, it still opens down like in a full yeah, tailgate. Which is the mode. important thing. Like yeah. nobody's for, nobody's forcing you to use this. It's just right. there if for whatever reason you need it. Uh, some of the one of the pieces of news that there's two pieces of news about the F-150 that kind of got buried from uh, most coverage that I found interesting. Uh, one is that they're going to they've got a revised hybrid model. Uh, it sort of got lost with all of the lightning uh, EV uh, uh, hoopla. About 10 percent of the F-150s have been going out the door with their hybrid powertrain. They want to increase that to 20% or more, and they have dropping the price on that by $2,000. And I'm not sure if it's standard, but I got the impression it was. You will also get the onboard ac- access to the onboard generator, because there is a generator. That's how hybrids work. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to do power tools and stuff like that right off the bat instead of adding yeah. some option later. I think it's like a 2.4 kilowatt system that's so standard. So it won't power your house. But, but then you can 
10 option for yeah. a beef here, like a 7.2, right. I think. Yeah, and that's and then, what they had before. Well, yeah, there was a lower one yeah. before. Yeah. That, I think they just did away with that one. Yeah. I think that's uh, really, No, I think well, it's 2 kilo. I think you can still get the 2 kilowatt. But, that might, but be, it's, that it's, might be what's standard. It's on, like, yeah, it's it's the standard. Uh, but that's on the, I think, on the just the gas trucks. Or, or, oh, yeah. That's what so you get. Now, yeah. So now it's on the hybrid, and they've priced it. By dropping the price, you can actually get the hybrid for the cost, about the cost you can get the gas engine in some of the models. That's what they're saying. We don't know the details yet. I think that's very significant. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about hybrids in a minute, but I think that's very significant to get more people into a little bit better fuel economy for the trucks, but adding capability while you're doing it. 10% mm-hmm. of their sales being hybrid now would probably make it one of the better selling hybrids in the country right? and their, like their aim is 20 percent would be big because th- it's think already the best be the right it's already f-150 is already the best selling vehicle in america right. so 10 percent mm-hmm. of those sales it's got to be uh, you know rivaling some of the other hybrids. prius i would think well they are obviously after that crown they said that they think this will make them the best selling hybrid out there hmm. With this, though, they also are reducing. I mean, the the, the full size pickup truck. Everybody knows you go in. It takes forever to order one if you've ever ordered one because you pretty much have to check off all the little individual boxes for mm-hmm. options you want. They're reducing the number of combinations that you can get by ninety percent. So fewer models and more packages. And fewer standalone um, options, fewer colors, and they're saying as well, so the dealers don't have to stock as wide uh, an array, and obviously makes it easier for ordering, makes it much much easier on the assembly line. Maybe they had the uh, UAW is. strike in their mind when they did this. Um, what do you think though about the about this aspect? The pickup truck was kind of like the last thing that you could really customize to your own liking. You think because if Ford does it, I'm sure Chevrolet and, and Ram will follow. Yeah, I mean it's been that way with most cars yeah. for a while now. Like you said, trucks were the final holdout, so it was just a matter of time. Yeah, but the truck buyers are the truck buyers are pretty individual people. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to yeah. split brands. Doubtful. I would say yeah. that was the case 20, 30 years ago. Now truck buyers are car buyers because yeah. most people. Mm-hmm. Use so their truck so like used to it. Yeah. 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 I mean, normally I'm all for like the customization, like do what you want. And I think sometimes like it goes like there's the other end of it where like, you know, because I spend my days pricing out new mm-hmm. Mustangs and there are certain options I want that's, oh, you got to get this, this and this. And like, I don't like that. Um, but then I think maybe sometimes having too many options, of course, could be a bad thing. And some of it makes sense. Like, I think the extended range fuel tank is now just standard hmm. um, or always standard on certain models. And like, to me, that just makes sense because everyone's optioning it. So you might as well just say, all right, here you go. And I think that's uh, probably a large you know, part of what this I is would, all about. I would guess that's how Ford is going to frame it. They're yeah. going to be like, yeah, you know how you never know what to watch on Netflix. Or you never mm. know what to order. Well, we're going to make it simple on you. We're not going to give you any options. You can just have it. You know, you just choose from like this one, this one, or that one. But in reality, they just, like you said earlier, mm. it's probably just easier on them yeah. than their assembly line. 100%. Right. Oh, absolutely. Most anything a car company does about assembly uh, is to their benefit. Whoa, are you serious? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we are breaking some news there today. No, <laughs> we're not. I mean, all of the, these days, a, a lot of uh, sub-assemblies, like you know, the whole interiors, arrive already done at the assembly oh, plant. Yeah. They just slip them in. Yep. So. Um, Back on the hybrid aspect, you know, I think we've all been so caught up with all the EV mania that we've forgotten the value of hybrids. And I mean, for Toyota basically is case in point. They, you can get a hybrid now on almost everything that they make. And some models and, you can only get a hybrid. And some mm-hmm. models only hybrid. But why aren't we seeing more of the manufacturers embrace this? It's such an obvious way to improve fuel economy and improve power at the same time. That's a great question. <laughs> Are you talking specifically hybrids or plug-in hybrids? Well, hi- even just straight hybrids uh, without a plug. You know, small battery, using both the gas and electric engine for whatever mean duty cycles they, they best work out. Uh, I mean, you ought to look at Prius. I mean, you know, or look at any of the Toyota basic hybrid vehicles. You get an immediately solid jump in fuel economy, sometimes 20 30 percent or more. Yeah, I think there's a ton of hybrids out there. I would, I would like to see more plug-in hybrids. Mm. Uh, I think that makes more sense. Me too. What, what, what if you were in the market for a plug-in hybrid? 
What's the the all EV range that would make you jump? Oh, anything's a bonus uh, to me because you know people say, oh, well, it's only thirty miles. Well, it's not just like thirty miles a tank. I mean, it's thirty miles every single day if you plug it in at night. So yeah. I mean, that's twice well, a day sometimes. Yeah. If you leave. Yeah. So like for yeah. me, our Outlander gets thirty eight miles. Yeah. So I live about forty miles away, a lot of highway. Um, and I can pretty much make it in on all electric. And then if I were to charge it during the day and go back home, I have another 38 miles. So you're talking at most for like a north, like in mine's probably like an average to an above average commute. Uh, you're talking like less than a gallon of gas that I'm using just from, mm-hmm. I mean, just plugging it in overnight. And this is trickle charge. Like I yeah, trickle charge just, it overnight. Just your normal 110, yeah. 120 outlet, whatever it is. I think uh, You don't but, have to buy anything fancy for it. To answer your question more directly than Robinson did. Yeah, I got us off track. My bad. I think like to make to like the wow would be 50 miles right now because I think we're seeing a lot of 30 close to 40. Mm-hmm. I think you hit with like 50 miles that just that number makes people feel it sounds a like better. a it sounds like yes. a solid number. That sounds like oh, that's more than my commute. That's yeah, that's, that's my probably, commute and then some. Yeah, that's which, what I was going to say. Yeah. Which ironically enough, that's what the Volt had the when volt, it came out, yeah, and then yeah. everyone poo pooed it, right? Because yeah. only 50 miles. Yeah. <laughs> Once GN, GM had a better idea, but didn't stick with it. Um, I know, I know if you asked any auto engineer, uh, they're going to say it's complexity. And during the pandemic or after the pandemic, when they couldn't get parts for normal vehicles, they didn't want to have to get parts for two powertrains in one vehicle. But that's past now. I think it's time to stop. Uh, thinking that EVs are going to be perfect for everybody and start looking at hybrids and plug-in hybrids much more seriously. But then uh, I'm not a, I'm not uh, in Congress for the president, so my not yet anyway. No, I don't think it's going to. Ha- I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. I have written your name in multiple times. <laughs> <Yes>. Just <laughs> that's an aside. Uh, rant and rave time here on our podcast. And I think that's what we've been doing almost this entire podcast. Well, I, I have one okay, good. ready to go. Oh, I have two, actually. But I'm going to go with the one that's been sitting in my brain for a while. And it's not necessarily automotive, but it's automotive adjacent. So when you're in a, a grocery store and there are uh, aisles and shopping carts, it's kind of like being on our street, right? You have mm-hmm. your side streets. You have your main thoroughfares. It's... There, there are some rules there, even though they may not be written. So, like, I don't understand why when I'm going down the main, it's not even an aisle. It's like the main, what, do you, what would you call it in a grocery store? The highway? like it's at the book aisle, end, yeah. The bookends. All right, the bookends. Oh, oh, at the top and bottom. I, okay. I start on the bakery, and maybe I want to get back to dairy, right. so I'm on that mm-hmm. big road. That's the cross, the and cross I'm, channel road. So you yeah. would think that the I'm on. The express lane. Correct. I'm yeah. on the main right. road. It is. Anybody coming out of an aisle. That's a side street. Would have a side street and a stop sign. Right. <laughs> Nobody treats it that way, man. People come. I'm flying out of aisles, just like about to run into my car or maybe even my kids sometimes. It's mm-hmm. like people come out of those aisles with like reckless abandon. And I'm just like, how does not, does nobody make the connection between this and like a road? Like, would you just pull out well, onto a main street without even well, thinking? Well, they do, though. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is it scarier that they may not make the connection or that they are and that's just how they drive? That's ter- well, terrifying. Well, nobody me. stops at stop signs anymore. No, it's California rule. You know? Well, <laughs> in the, I mean, we're in the state of Maryland and certain side streets, you it's legal that you do not have to stop, if, even if there's a stop sign. And, and it's like, I don't get it. I'm sorry. And, and I mean, you get into the habit that once you see everybody else do it, you know, you roll through these stop signs and that's when you get tickets. Mm-hmm. I might. Maybe I'll take the stand next time somebody does it to me in the grocery store. Maybe I'll just hit them with my cart. Like, do I have to like. Is just that a, remember, we live in a litigious not them. society. I'll, I'll hit the cart. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a good enough driver to hit their cart. But, you know, you mentioned the end caps on the aisles. They're often wider than the shelf space. So they actually are like a big tree at an intersection. Oh, you can't see anything. You can't see around them. I don't. I'm like. Does anybody else notice this, or is it just me? No, I do. Um, Robinson, come on, man. You got to like every store. Other, Here we go. Much like everyone that embraces technology these days, I get my groceries delivered. I don't oh, even. Nice. I don't you go do. To, no. I was gonna say, how I much do they you? cost you? What's your closest grocery store? <laughs> Okay. I was just going to say, see, I shop, uh, I, I go to the store more frequently as opposed to doing one big trip. Yeah. So I've got the little hand basket. So I'm like the motorcyclist that's splitting lanes. I'm just like cutting and weaving, you know? 
I respect that. Yeah, I'm cool with it just to get out of my way. Yeah, yeah. And don't take my right of way. Don't take my right of way, and I'm cool. And that actually gets me into the biggest gripe I have is that nobody knows what yield, what you know yielding the right of way means anymore. That's that's a, a totally lost concept. And I don't know if that's because they don't teach it in driving schools or measure anymore, but you know, you just cannot depend on anyone yielding the right of way. Maybe you should have to watch like a two minute video when you pick up a cart that gives you proper <laughs> cart etiquette. Would that be I like that. I love that yeah. idea. Yeah, or like, it should just be playing on the cart while uh, you have a yeah, little yeah. tablet, it's you like, have to do a quiz. I would enjoy yeah. making that video. Maybe we should inquire about you that. You can do that right idea. after you make the video about proper armrest <laughs> etiquette on an airplane. What is that? Uh, right, hit me with whole, it real quick. That's a whole well, thing. Well, I always uh, – if you have a window or an aisle, you get one armrest yeah, correct. because yep. you yeah. don't have anybody next right. to you. Right. If you're in the middle seat, you get two armrests. Yeah, I just yeah. want to make sure yeah. we're on yep. the same yep. page. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, most people don't know that. Anyway, all right, enough of this. We're actually going to get back to talking automotive next time. I want to thank everybody uh, for, for this terrific podcast, Brian Robinson, Greg Carlos, Alex Kellum. I want to thank our advertisers, Auto value and bumper to bumper and tire our audio engineer austin harris our podcast producer who's not here today jessica ray and our podcast creator bob mixter thanks to all of you for listening today and if you are wondering what time motorway can be seen on your local public television station go to our website motorweek.org click on the tab watch motorweek and then enter your zip code for the days and times in your area or hop on over to our cable partner at mav TV.com for their schedule. You can also stream MotorWeek episodes for free on your mobile device or streaming box by downloading the PBS app. It's available on your device's app store or streaming channel library. And all of our individual road test and feature segments are also available at YouTube.com MotorWeek. In short, if you have a screen, you can watch MotorWeek. For Brian, Greg, Alex, I'm John Davis. Thanks for being a part of MotorWeek. You have been listening to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper and TireRack.com. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at MotorWeek.org. And watch MotorWeek, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.